Hi, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank, thank you for joining our class today. Uh, today is a special day. Uh, so everyone, by now, I guess you receive our, uh, the, the email about the uh, we newly created page. Uh, we upload everything, all the materials on this uh, page, right? So by now you may receive our email to look at our presentation material, lecture notes, reference materials, and also previously recorded uh, video uploaded to this page. So if you have any problem with uh, actually accessing to this page, please email back to us so that we can help you to able to access to this page, right? So. So for now, uh, let's uh, pay hom homage to Boda by saying Namo Sasa three times. By we start the we start the class, right? So Namo Tasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambo Tasa Namo Tasa Bhagavato. Uh, so, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Just as uh, Mr. Charlie has mentioned, uh, today is a special day. And in the West, it is the full moon day of the, the danger that marks the end of the Buddha, Buddhist retreat or the Vasa. And here in the East, it is the next day after the full moon day. So here you might notice the illustration that I have uh, chosen to share with you. This is the illustration, the painting um, that illustrates that the Buddha has descended from the celestial abode because we Theravada Buddhists traditionally believe that the Abhidhamma was originally taught by the Buddha in the Dhavadamsa heaven after seven years of his enlightenment. And in the last slide, I have already shared with you about three different versions of Abhidhamma that um, the Buddha taught to the deities in the Tavadamsa heaven for three months in the human uh, calculation that was taught in all details. And as a human being, the Buddha came down to the human world to take lunch, to take meal. Then upon that lunch time, Venerable Sariputta, the one of the chief disciples of the Buddha, uh, attended to the Buddha. So after, after lunch, then the Buddha uh, preached Abhidhamma briefly to Venerable Sariputta. And that is the brief version. And Venerable Sariputta retold his Abhidhamma to his disciple amounting to 500 monks. And that is the version that is neither in brief nor in detail. So this is the version that we are learning now. So here we can see that the Buddha was surrounded or accompanied by all the celestial deities, devas and brahmos. And we also uh, believe that um, all the deities, they created the silver, the, um, the golden and the ruby uh, walkway. And also uh, the deity also um, paying respect, paying homage to the Buddha uh, with the harp, playing the harp. And uh, this is very much devotional for our traditional Buddhist. And to mark this event, uh, traditionally, we offer light. 
as a token of the Buddha descending to the human world, that is to welcome the Buddha. So our Sakyatida Buddhist College and the nuns, they also created the small lamps. So this is, we offer last night and tonight also we are offering. So this is a uh, sort of background, background history and the Myanmar culture and tradition that we have done, then I'm happy to share with you. Then not taking much of your time, so today we are on the third lecture and from the main theme, we are now in the uh, sub theme of the getting to know our mind. So which we have started in the second lecture and to start with the two kinds of truth, conventional truth, Samudhi Satya, in Burmese we call Samudhi Thissa and the conventional truth, that is the Paramatha Satya or Paramatha Thissa. So after that, uh, I have sort of introduced you briefly about the mind and mainly about the roots. In Pali, we call Hedu. So the example is very simple and very easy. That is the tree or the plant with the root is very firm. So if you want to uh, cut the tree, you have to uproot the root so that it, will, it won't have the chance to grow again. And in the same way, when there are unwholesome consciousness or unwholesome mind arises in us, we have to uproot it. Then why do we have to, why do we have to do so? Here we will see. So here I have mentioned that getting to know our mind, this is the part two and specifically on our mind and its components because I haven't tell you much on what our mind is composed of. And further, we will go particularly on the unwholesome mental states or the Akusala Jeta Sutta. So here, our mind, body and the components. So now the slides are in the uh, black font with a white background. So I hope it's soothing and relaxing for the everybody to have better vision. So here, uh, I have also mentioned some Pali words and some numbers. And if it is confusing for you, then you, you may leave it and you may just listen to my uh, explanation. Uh, but for your reference, I have included everything. And for those who have learned Abhidhamar, it might be helpful for them as well. Either they go to join for the exam or for their further study. So for this purpose, I have included all the details about the Pali words and the numbers. So here it says that our mind and body and the components. Yes, our body, this part we will come later. Now we're going to see the first part that is our mind. So what is our mind composed of? Um, in our daily usage, we just say mind, but Abhidhamma detail, provide the detailed analysis of consciousness and mental states. As you can see here, it amounts to 89 or 121. Later, we will just have a, in the next lectures, we will just have a brief overview of how we get it. We won't count all these 89, don't worry. And the same way is applied to the mental states, that is the Jeta Sika, it amounts to 52. Then in the WhatsApp, WhatsApp group, I noticed that somebody has asked this question about the five aggregates and the uh, formation of Nama and Rupa. So here I have provided the explanation because it is uh, really necessary for all of us to know. So our mind, in terms of Nama and Rupa is only two, but when we come to the group or the aggregates, in Pali we call Kanda, in Nyama also Kanda because Nyama has adopted the Pali words. So among the five aggregates or the five group or five heap, we can say, the mind occupy altogether four. The first one, consciousness aggregate. Consciousness is in Pali is the Vijnana. Sometimes we also use the word jeda, okay? But it has to be used according to the context. Here, we used to say consciousness aggregate in Pali, we say vijnana kanda, okay? Vijnana and kanda. 
So here, consciousness refers to the Vijnana. Just as I have mentioned, another synonymous term of Vijnana is the Jada or J, say, right? But here we can say Jada Kanda, right? So it has to be used according to the con context, like eye consciousness. So when we see simply there is eye consciousness, on hearing, we have ear consciousness, smell, nose consciousness, and so on. So what is the nature of consciousness? Consciousness simply is conscious of the object. So what does conscious mean? It simply means knowing. Or another technical term, cognizing. So conscious of the object that knows the object, that is aware of the object. Okay, another term, awareness. So here awareness may bear awareness without any judgment as good or bad. So we can say non-judgmental awareness. Okay, I will repeat non-judgmental awareness or bear awareness. That is the nature or characteristic of consciousness um, that we have briefly seen last week. And I will also uh, review again with the slides in the next um, few slides. Then it amounts to 89 or 121. Then last week we have also seen that consciousness can be classified in many ways. One way is on the basis of the ethics. Like um, we say that our mind is good, our mind is bad, right? Wholesome, unwholesome, moral, immoral, all sort of things. So in Pali we call Akusala and Kusala. So we have already seen the nature like Akusala that is together with fault and that produces evil consequences and happiness or harm to oneself, to the family and to the environment. And on the other way around, Kusala means something that is wholesome without fault. And whenever you think about this, then you always feel happy you never have to repent. So this is what we have studied last week, right? Then here, when we say there are 89 or 121 type of jadas, there are various ways of classifications. And one way is classifying jadas in terms of unwholesome, akusala, right? Wholesome, kusala, and their resultant, vipaka, in Yama we call vipak right we baga so the result of unwholesome is the akusala we baga and you are um, enjoying the result of your merit that is the kusala we baga and some consciousness they are just uh, operating because they don't need to produce any result like for example those jadas that mostly arises in the arahants i have already explained that Arahants also cultivate loving kindness, compassion. Arahants also uh, do marriage. But this kind of meritorious deeds, when it arises in them, we don't call them as kusala. Instead, we call them as kiriya. It, that means functional, just mere doing or just mere operating. So there are few consciousness that arise as in human being, like in our mind door and eye door. So this we will come up later, right? So most of the Kiriya Jadas that are meant for the Arahants. So Jada is classified for in by means of fourfold, that is unwholesome, wholesome, resultant, and functional. In Pali, we would say Akusala, Kusala, Vipaka and Kiriya, right? So this is one way. Another way is by means of the existences like our human existences, celestial world and the uh, Brahmos and the um, woeful abodes like in the animal world and in the hell and all these things. So this is another way of classification. So whatever Jada it might be, either it would be your Jada or my Jada, or jada elsewhere, they all belong to the consciousness aggregate. Either it is the past one or the present one or the future one 
or the far one, the near one, whatever it might be, they all belong to this consciousness aggregate. Okay, then the next one, number two, feeling aggregate. That is the Vedana Kanda. So it's a combination of two words, Vedana and Kanda. Kanda is the aggregate, Vedana is the feeling. And to clarify this term, feeling, feeling has the nature or characteristic of experiencing the object, right? Experiencing the object. This we will come later uh, when we talk about a group of the mental states that always arise with the um, jada or our mind. So according to Abhidhamma, please know that feeling is always with us. And so is the third one, perception. So number two, feeling aggregate. Although it is just one aggregate, sorry, just one mental state because feeling is also a jita siga or mental state. It just form aggregate itself. It's like a very strong person that you can, uh, he or she can stand by himself or herself without needing support from anyone else. The third one, perception. That is the taking note. Now I'm sharing my knowledge to you and you are taking note either on paper or either in your mind relating from what you have learned before or what you understand from time to time. So this is the noting system, right? Noting system, noting system in the mind, that is the perception. Why do we have to take note? This is for the future reference. Because from time to time, I say that in my first lecture, I have said this and in this lecture, I will say that. And in our next lecture, we will go this. So you always have to relate all the time. So that is by means of this perception. So please know this perception in Bali, we call Senya. In Nyama, we call Tenya, like Ahmed Tenya. It also form and aggregate itself. Okay, now we have already encountered two mental states. Feeling, this is one. And another one is the perception. And the fourth one, let's move on. Number four, mental formation aggregates, that is the Sankara Kanda. So it says that 50 mental states led by motivation of volition, Jedana. So at least we have part of this term Jedana. So how come from where does this 50 Jedesikas come? So we can see on our, under the heading above, on the second line, we can see mental states or jetasikas amounts to 52. So in number two, we have already taken feeling which form and aggregate itself. And in number three, we have perception which form another aggregate itself, right? So the remaining five zero or 50 jetasika, they all belong to an aggregate, which we call mental formation. That is the Sankara. So this term Sankara is also very much wide ranging and you might encounter this from time to time. And I have already received a question through an email that a participant has asked, what is the difference between this Sankara here, which is translated as mental formation and the sankata, that is the conditioned phenomena. Because in the uh, first lecture, we have said that we have altogether four ultimate realities, which are explained in very much detailed in the Abhidhamma. And the first three, that is our mind, which is composed of consciousness and mental state, and our physical body, they are conditioned. It means they come into existence when the conditions are favorable. And in the same way, um, there are some changes or there are some transformations due to these conditions in that we call our mind and body as the conditioned, whereas Nibbana as the unconditioned. So his question is, what is the difference between this Sankhara? In Yama, we call Tenkhara, right? What is the difference between Sankhara and Sankhara? So this I will uh, explain later because this also is um, necessary to know so that we don't make mistake. 
not every sankara, not every Pali word sankara is to be translated as mental formation. Only in the case of this aggregate or the kanda, this sankara or thinkara is to be translated as mental formation. Sorry, mental formation. So here, please notice it is led by the motivation or volition jitana. We know that we often say that jitana is karma, and I have done this out of this volition or good volition or motivation jitana, which we often say. Then uh, summing up these uh, aggregates, so here we can see that the 52 jitasika, they form or they constitute three aggregates, namely feeling, perception, and the mental formation. And our consciousness, whatever consciousness it may be, they form a separate or individual aggregate, that is the Vajnana Khanda, okay? So among the five aggregates, the mind covers four, as I have mentioned above. And moving further, our body is composed of 28 material qualities or material properties or matters forming matter aggregate or rupet kanda. So um, at the beginning, I have given you example about the nature of the hardness of this pen, right? Hardness. So um, comparing to this pen, this tissue paper is softer, but comparing to the um, table, then this pen would be not, not, this pen is not as hard as the table. It can be broken or you can break it uh, without making much effort. So there is always the comparison. There is always the rel relativity like hardness and softness. And how about heat and cold? So how are you feeling now? After taking that warm water, I feel sweating. I feel hot, but prior to that, I have taken shower, so I feel a bit chilled, right? So this nature of hot, heat and cold, this is also matter, the quality of the matter. And I'm sitting in the chair, so this is uh, supported by this air element or wire tattoo, which keeps me uh, sitting in the upright position, and so are you. So these all these material qualities, which we might come up later, belong to another aggregate, that is the um, meta aggregate, Rupa Kanda, right? So this is how our mind and body is composed of and how our mind and body constitutes or represents the five aggregates. Why do we have to know all these details? Isn't it enough it's if I just know mind and body and there may be like a different um, understanding among different people. Some people may understand the explanation of between as a group of two, just mind and body, but to some, the explanation of the aggregate may be clearer or better. So in that we have the different kind of classification and the main purpose of classifying either by way of two or five or whatever, this is for the Attainment of the knowledge. Nama rupa parecheda jnana. Because at the very beginning, we have seen that Abhidhamma talk mainly about the classification or the distinguishing or discerning of mind and matter. So what happened when we understand this? We can reduce our attachment our craving, our like and dislike, all these things. Because um, especially during this um, time of the uh, pandemic, um, the nature of impermanence is really um, obvious. I may be here, but I don't know, I may be tomorrow or I may be next week or next month or anything can happen anytime, right? And suppose, I, I have attachment to this one or I have attachment to my phone and if it broken, then oh, I feel sad and this because I have attachment on that. I shouldn't have attachment on that, but I should use it carefully and properly as a device, right? So this is the thing. 
So every phenomena that is uh, except the nibbana, it can come under this um, component of mind and body and the aggregates. Now let's move on to another one, the nature of our mind. So our main topic today is the getting to know our mind part two, our mind and its components. So this I have already explained. Then I would see a bit more detail into our minds. Okay. After that, we will focus on the unwholesome mental states today. So our mind, Pali, what is Nama? Or in uh, Myanmar, we call Na, Yogna, right? Rupa and Nama or vice versa. We can say Nama and Rupa. Why is it called Nama? Because by nature, our mind bent towards the object. What does bend mean? So here I'm bending my, my hand. So the, my mind doesn't bend like this. I mean in posture or by appearance, it means the mind inclines towards the object. So please understand this is a metaphorical usage, right? So uh, when uh, we talk about something about, let's say, uh, my story of the Buddha descending from the Tavarensa heaven and about illustration, your mind goes there. So, and uh, metaphorically, it is used as the mind bending towards the object. Because your mind is inclined towards the object, you are just sitting in the chair, maybe not moving, but your mind went to that illustration or your thought go there. That's why it is called mind, that is the bending towards the object. So the word object is very important. Our mind and object are always together. So at least we got to remember this, even though you may not remember all the Pali, right? So here, mind is derived from the Pali word or the vowel root, sorry, uh, namadi, that is bending or inclining. So, here I have um, taken out some references. Here it say, the mind itself is pure and brilliant. Our mind is pure and brilliant. It means our original mind is pure and brilliant. Then it says that, ba ba sara, me dem, bake away, jade dem. Bake away, we know it is the vocative case, O oh, monks like my disciples or my dear monks, that is the address given by the Buddha to his disciple, oh monks. And Babasara idem, idem mean this, Babasara idem jadem. So this is to be uh, combined, idem jadem, jada is mine. This mind is Babasara, pure and brilliant. It is shining. So it means Mind originally is pure and brilliant. So here is very important to take notice of which mind we have to take, right? Because later we might have misunderstanding and misconception. I don't have to do anything because our mind original is pure and brilliant. I just have to sit and I can do anything I like because my mind is already pure. Just please don't take that way. So here, let's move on to the explanation. So here you can see um, the reference Atta Salini. In the middle of the our slides, you can see the Atta Salini. So that is the expositor. That is the name of a book, particularly the commentary on the first Abhidhamma text. That is the Dhamma Singhani. That's the words and the concepts are not easy to comprehend, we really need the ex explanation or commenting. So nowadays, uh, we people used to comment on the Facebook or another uh, social media. So here, we also have this commenting. Commenting here means explanation, the detailed explanation of a um, subject matter or a Pali word or a phrase. So this we call commentary, right? So here, the commentary, this is the explanation taken from the commentary because we don't know how does it become pure? What is the meaning of pure? What is brilliant? 
and by which mind it is referred to. So these are very um, significant and really essential to know. So originally our mind is pure, so that's okay. Then the mind got defiled by the mental defilements or the mental impurities or the mental hindrances that got invaded from outside. For example, let's take this simple example. Let's compare, let's take our mind to our house. It say the mind is pure. Let's say our house is clean. But some visitors um, who are not much disciplined, they would bring in all kinds of food items and they would come and eat in your house and they would dirty the whole lot in the whole building. It is like that, for example. I, I don't mean all the visitors. There are many visitors who are very much well disciplined and taking care, always taking care not to uh, disturb the host. But this kind of visitor is sort of disturbance. So here, the mind itself is pure and it got defiled. It got impure by the visitors from outside. What kind of visitors? They are here referred to as mental defilements or mental impurities or the mental hindrances. Let that dirty the mind. For example, loba, craving or attachment. Right? And then another one uh, like um, uh, Tina and Maida, like sloth and torpor. Maybe it's too boring listening to me because I have been talking just alone and you all just have to listen and it is almost time to rest. Then you might have this kind of problem as well. So first you are fresh and when the dullness or the lethargy or the laziness, when it overwhelms us or when it influences us, then we nod our head. Not that you are supporting me, just that uh, you're getting drowsy, sleepy, right, for example. So the mind got defiled by such kind of phenomena. So here, the, the Pali word is the so if you uh, don't learn Pali before, don't worry. Please just listen here as the reference I, has, I have taken out the Pali words as well. So that is what represents here. We know kilesa. In Nema also we call kileta, right? That make our mind dirty like anger, like hatred, right? Like the pride or the conceit or the jealousy stinginess, all sorts of things. So Denja called Agantuke, he Agantuka means visitor. We, we also know this word Agantuka, Agantu, that is the visitor who come from outside. So this is the explanation here. So what does brilliant mind here mean? Brilliant mind refers to the here, but when Gajeda. Okay, what is the word here? Bawanga jeda. In Nyama, we call Bowen Se. But this Bowenga is not what we um, know erroneously or mistakenly. When something doesn't fit in, uh, as a colloquial usage, we Nyama people say Bowen Majabu or it doesn't fit in. It doesn't have to do anything with this kind of, such kind of thing or the usage, it is totally a different phenomena. So this reference I have taken from our rector Siado, Dr. Nanda Malabi Wemsa, the noble uh, teaching of the Buddha. So this is uh, Abhidhamma Nyadithana. So in that Siado has explained this. Um, it refers to the, uh, the pure or the brilliant mind refers to the Bawenga Jeda. So these terms is also essential for us. So here, down there, we have three kinds of uh, function or the phenomena. The first one, rebirth linking or relinking. That is the petit sandi, right? 
petit mean re or again or for the next time linking that it mean it links the past life it with our present life so that is the very first jada we got into mother's room as a tiny drop of water since then we have this rebirth linking consciousness the mind is already there because it linked the past life with this present life it is known as the rebirth linking or in another way we call relinking that is the pati sandhi in myanmar we call pati sandhi say so that consciousness arises just one time because you are not uh, like in mother's womb you are born all the time right i mean um, at the conceptual level you are born only once in a life but our life has to be continued because if it doesn't continue our life will come to end so please see here relinking or rebirth linking this is one another one life continuum and the last one death so our life has only three parts simply we say we are born we live and we die right we are born meaning this rebirth linking and we are living during this lifetime we have this life continuum or bawenga jeda so when does bawenga jeda arises in our mind now you can see me or you can hear me there is seeing consciousness or eye consciousness there is hearing consciousness or ear consciousness and it is also it comes in a series not alone it comes in a series we call the um thought process of vt and as it come it takes the present object when there is the vt jada or the thought process let's say active type of consciousness you are looking at something you are listening you are eating smelling tasting thinking these are the active state of mind right active state of mind is going from the front from in front and behind that there is sort of this inactive state of mind which is known as the bawenga so in between these thought processes we also have this bawenga and the longest time or the pro the most prominent time we have this bawenga is during deep sleep because uh, when you are having dream is a mixture of this um thought active jada and passive or the inactive jada mixture of that but if you are in this deep, deep sleep there is no dream so the moment of bawenga are going on uh, most of the time or all the time during deep sleep and the last one is to be marked by death then this bawenga it also arises in between our seeing our hearing smelling now you are hearing my voice now we have started for let's say 40 minutes and it seem like you are hearing my voice for 40 minutes but even in the word b u t but when you hear when i say b after that u the moment i am saying u b already disappear and as i move on when i say b u t but when i say t b and u already disappear so it disappear word by word second by second minute by minute and because it comes in an continuous series or the incessant series that we think it is continuing all the time but there are short more very short moments of bawenga also um coming in between the active consciousness then you might think why is that bawenga interfering because uh, we don't want you we just want to listen we don't want, we just want to see we just want to enjoy our food but we need this bawenga literally it means bawa is life right anga is factor so literally bawenga me life factor and in abidama we used to talk about the nature or the characteristic or the function of the mental and physical phenomena so the function of this bawenga is to continue life if there were no bawenga our life will come to end and 
at the same time when there is uh, that consciousness that that bhavanga is no more so uh, these three are very important um, so uh, going back to this slide i would like to emphasize that first i say that our mind bent or inclined towards the object it may mind and object cannot be separated they are always together and another one the mind itself is pure and brilliant and please know it refers to the bhavanga jeda um, because the the object that is taken by bhavanga is the past object just remember that not the present object present object mean the the vis visual object or the sound, the smell, the taste, or the thinking, all these, uh, they belong to the present object. But of course, during thinking, in terms of thinking, there may be uh, the thought for the past, the thought for the future as well. But when we come to the five senses, that is the visual object or the visible object, form or appearance, whatever can be seen with the eye, the sound, the smell, the taste, and the tangible object, they all are present object, right? So uh, please note that. And let's move on to another one. Actually, this is not a new one. This is just I have a copy from the previous lecture just to remind you again or refresh your memory of the uh, fourfold analysis of consciousness. Here, uh, last week we have seen that uh, mental phenomena, especially the here, the Jada and Jada Siga, each of them is analyzed by means of fourfold way. The first one is characteristic or nature. So what is the characteristic or nature of the consciousness? Here, first I was talking about mind, and now I move on to consciousness, okay? Please know, consciousness is part of our mind, right? So uh, please bear that in mind. The nature of this consciousness is knowing of an object. So it means um, the mind cannot can be never away from object. Mind and object are always together. So what are the objects? I will come very soon. So what does the mind do? Yes, it aware of the object is nature. So what else does it do? So it's a forerunner of mental states. It presides over them and accompanied by them. Um, this mind, when it knows the object, it does not arise alone or it cannot exist alone. It always have to come together with a group of the mental states, which we call the Jitasika. And last week we have this example. Suppose you are drawing a painting, a colorful painting, sorry. Then, the plain canvas is compared to the mind because the mind knowing uh, the knowing of the object by the mind or the awareness of the object by the mind is just very pure and just bare awareness, non judgmental awareness. Right? So it's like a new canvas without any color and any drawing or any mark on any spot on it. And Jedesikas or mental states they are likened to the color paints that you draw, like you may be drawing a portrait or you may be drawing a scenery or a mountain or um, whatever. There is always the message that the artist wants to give the um, another people, right? So this Jedesikas are like the color paints. So the mind just preside over them, going back to number two, this accompanied by them. So it says that the mind is just the leader. The leader knows what to do, but he or she cannot do everything. So there must be a team of people who are working together with him or with her. So that's the meaning. The consciousness is like the president and the mental states. They are like a group of the ministers or the uh, management team. That's the meaning. And number three, a uh, manifestation, how does it appear in us? So it say in the meditator's experience, 
It may, uh, right now also we can understand, but during meditation, we can focus our mind so we know in much more detail. In the meditator's experience, it is a continuity of processes. Just as I have explained, seeing comes in a process and later I will get you some diagram and picture of how the process and every jadas are going. Uh, I have um, got some diagram to share with you for the next uh, lecture. And here we have this example, like the flame. You offer light to the Buddha, right? The flame is burning. I mean like the candlelight. Because, and, and it says that this candlelight can last for two hours, three hours. So throughout that two or three hours, if there is no wind gushing in or pushing, then the flame will keep going. So we think that the flame keeps going for two or three hours. Actually, it is not. The first one arises. That's why you, we, you know the wit is getting shorter or burnt because it keeps on burning. And because it's continuing, we think it is uh, stable for two or three hours, but it comes in a series or a process. And another example, the current of the river. We have this saying, right? You can never swim in the river twice. It means you cannot swim in the same water because the water, the, the water that existed during the moment of your swimming has already flow off and it is replaced by another flow of current. So this is the meaning and the proximate cause, mind and matter. It means it cannot exist alone. The mind cannot exist alone. It has to be together with the uh, mental states or the jitasika, which give color to the mind and also material phenomena or the material quality rupa. It means since we are in the mother's womb as a very tiny drop of water, which I will explain in the chapter on the rupa, there is the combination of both mind and matter. And we also have another subtopic, sub thing that I have chosen, patana in daily life. We can see mind and matter since our very beginning have been working together. And we have this very simple example, a person who cannot see and a person who cannot walk. Right? Um, for example, um, the mind can see. The mind can see, but it is unable to walk. And the body, it cannot see, but it can walk. So the mind has to direct the body or uh, inform and uh, guide the body. You, you go straight and at this place, you turn left, you turn right, and you should avoid there is a big hole or this is the crossover that you have to make it. And otherwise, um, the physical body itself will fall off because it has the abil it has not the ability to see. So it's a very good combination, a person who cannot walk and a person who cannot see, they walk together so that they reach their destination. So this is a very simple example for us. Then after all these theories, so are you bored now? After listening about 50 minutes, here is the teaching from the Dhammapada. Now let's see the nature of our mind. It talks generally, um, so, but it is really true. Mind takes delight in evil. So we have two choice. We are at the junction, whether we go to the left, let's say this is good, and to the right, that is evil, or whether we go up or we go down. Mind takes delight in evil. Papa same. Ramati Mano, Papa. Papa is evil. Ramati me takes delight in. Mano me mind. Mind takes delight in the evil. Then, how about the teaching? The mind is always bright and brilliant, and it got defiled by the uh, visitors, which make it impure and like uh, dirty. If we don't make effort, sometimes we feel sort of lazy. 
we always have to make our center or our confidence develop. And also we need the mindfulness and effort so that we can get our get our job done. Otherwise, we tend to waste our time with some sort of laziness. I don't mean to say that sometimes our physical body is tired, we have to um, take a proper rest for the uh, well being of the physical body. But when there is no mindfulness, no effort, and no confidence, the mind is lazy. For example, or as a schedule, we have to get up around 4 or latest 4.15, 4.30 in the morning, and we have to join chanting, morning service. But sometimes we feel lazy. Then we have to encourage ourselves, insist ourselves. Sometimes, like our uh, co-residents have to, our seniors or our um, friends have to remind us, okay, got up, got up, then we have to go for chanting. But when we got to the shrine room, also we feel uh, very uh, peaceful and pleasant. But at the start, it's always difficult. And another example, like um, uh, most of us, many people like to enjoy taking food. Yes, we always tend to look for food and take enjoyment in it and hankering after it, right? So, and we spend most of our time enjoyment with the sensual pleasures, all the beautiful sound and object. And these days, you know, like um, business people, they know how to uh, promote their products because they know that in one Abhidhamma book, I have read that. Then uh, the teacher was telling, if you know Abhidhamma, you can make business and not to undermine Abhidhamma. And even like the business people, they don't learn Abhidhamma, but they know your mind. What is the nature of our mind? Our mind always want a new object, more pleasant object, more advanced object. That's why it's, it's never end up uh, hankering after it, right? So that's the meaning. Then do we just leave our mind like that? No, because we want always want to be happy and peaceful, then what do we have to do? We have to tame our mind. We have to guide our mind with the mindfulness, right? And effort and the uh, wisdom. And of course, we also need to upgrade, develop our confidence or sadha from time to time. Then which kind of action give us happiness? Of course, kusala. So what does it say here? Well done is that action doing which one does not repent later and reaps the fruit with fruit, hear me, advantages or result with delight. So this you can also um, read yourself. And just one that I would like to read together. The second last one. So long as an evil deed has not ripened, the fool thinks it as sweet as honey. Yes. So this also a very good reminder. So the, re the remaining that you can read yourself. Now we come to the mental states. So again, we talk about something technical. Mental states, they are like the color paints, right? But without canvas or without paper or any material, you cannot draw. Yes, you can draw in the air, but nothing would remain, right? At least you have to write on the paper or sometimes you draw, do some drawing in the sand. There is the object, there is the base, right? So um, in the same way, the mental states which are likened to the color paints depend on the jadar and color the jadar. Yes, the color paints, when it comes on the canvas, they make the picture and they give you a message or a feeling or a kind of taste. This is the meaning. So like the color paints to the canvas. Then these mental states and 
this consciousness, they always arise together. So these four are the nature or characteristic of the consciousness. Arising together, seizing together, having the same object, having the same base. We can have simple example, the students, they go to class. The class started at the same time, for example, 9 a.m. And the class, if it is full day class, it finished at 3 p.m. Or if it is half day, like maybe 6 to 12 a.m. or something. So the starting, the, the starting time of the class is the same. And the finishing of the class is the same. That is like arising together and seizing together, having the same object. They all come to the school for the purpose of learning. Learning their lesson, learning their life, learning their attitude, learning everything. So the main purpose of coming to school is learning apart from passing the exam. There are many things to learn at school, right? And having the same base may like having the same college, university or the same classroom. Based on the same class or the college or university, students come to the class to learn. Their class starts at the same time and their class is over at the same time. So we can have this simple example for this four full characteristics. And here it says that, keeps on saying that, consciousness and associated mental states takes an object in the process of cognizing the object. So what do they do when they are together? Suppose they are doing a project. They will try to make their project accomplished, complete. So what is their purpose? Process of cognizing the object, knowing awareness. The mind, when it's doing its function of cognizing, knowing the object, the function of this mental state is giving color or the giving the ethical quality of wholesome and unwholesome, ethical and unethical, moral and immoral. So though they are like the subordinates, it is them who decide the quality of the jada. So that's the meaning. So here we got to know what is object because Xiaoli has been always talking, the mind is always without object, object. What is the object? So here we will look. There are two Pali terms that represent the word object. The first one, aramana, okay, aramana. In Yama, we call ayo. Six kinds of object, ayo, chao ba, right? So literally, aramana means taking delight in. Okay, what, does, what is the meaning of Aramana? Taking delight in like the pleasant garden. You go to visit a park, right? There are different species of orchids and different kinds of fruits and flowers and it's very spacious and it's arranged in a very pleasant way that you feel fresh and relaxed getting into the garden. Then you will take picture, you will sit down like um, enjoying the breeze talking with your family or just looking around, just doing nothing, just sitting in, its, in the garden itself is just being pleasant for you. So this is Aramana, taking delight in. So the object, so the mind takes delight in the object. That's why it is known as the Aramana. Another Pali word for the object is the Alambana. So the function is different like a walking stiff. Suppose uh, you have a pain in the knee or you, your, your uh, leg got injured, you need some support or a walking staff or the stick to hang on so that you can walk, sort of assistance. Or like some people, when they do rehab, they might need to um, walk along a rope or a line of the, um, steel bar or so that they can hold on and they can walk. So this is the meaning of the alam banat, to hang on. Then how many objects do we have? Objects are and the corresponding basis for two. 
So it might sound technical to you, but what we are talking or what I'm sharing is what is actually happening within us. And we are just given label to that, right? And this label, the words itself, they are the concept, Benyati, but we need this concept to label that word so that we can have this explanation. So this visible object or visual object depends on the eye, Jaku, but to, to familiarize some terms, right? Jaku, in Yama we call Saku visible object. Sound depends on the ear base, smell, nose base, tongue, taste object, tongue base, tangible object, body base, this we know, five senses and five bases, eye, ear, nose, tongue and body, right? They are the bases because depending on our eye, uh, the science say retina, right? Then where the image would reflect, then we have the seeing. And there is also some sensitive part in our ear and the sensitive parts in our nose and the tongue and our body. And the last one, mental object depends on heart base, heart alpha two. So apart from this visible object, sound, smell, taste and intangible object, the remaining, all remaining object, including the thinking, it belongs to the mental object. So both object and base are matters. So for this, we will study more detail. And meeting of these two produces consciousness, which is part of mind. Here again, analyzing. Why? Because when we know that, when the sound come into your ear, you hear. This is very simple. I don't need, even need to explain. But why do we have to reflect that? Because we have to apply that in our daily life. In our daily life, many people would talk good about you, sometimes criticize you. Um, there are many people with many temperament. You are doing something good for the welfare of the people, for the welfare of the people, but people may understand and take it different way and they would criticize you. What happened? really upsetting, irritating, right? When we take that into account, we feel that. But when we don't take that into account, sometimes we try to bear, okay, it will just go and disappear. Then you are better, better in the sense that you don't suffer. So what do we have to analyze this? That somebody sound, unpleasant sound, the critical words, the critical comments, or sometimes even some rude and abusive words, because on the social media, uh, sometimes I use Facebook, and these days, people, some people, maybe there are some people who don't care to use the abusive words. It becomes so common and so uh, like a habitual that they are not hesitant to use it. Seeing that, hearing that, it may be criticizing you or criticizing me or criticizing our Buddhist people or criticizing the Mar people or human being at large. What happened? When we can analyze this way, we will have anger. And how long we will hold that anger? The longer the, uh, we hold this ang anger, or hatred, or the irritation, or the aversion, just like we suffer. The moment we let go, then we are much better. We feel better. We feel relief. We are happy. So because that the abusive words of that person, if it come to the ear, it is just a sound so that the ear base it hear, and as a result, we have this hearing consciousness. It means the mind and matter, they are just meeting together and as a result, we are angry. Then it shouldn't be so. So this is for the purpose of such contemplation. Either praise or blame, it won't last forever. It will go one time, one day, right? So for such kind of analysis, enjoying meditation also is the same. 
you are meditating and you have good concentration. Some, so all of a sudden, the speaker, or they are making some announcement, maybe for the healthcare or maybe for the uh, selling some items or maybe for donation or whatever item, all of a sudden the speaker, the loudspeaker sound very noisy. Then if we don't have such kind of contemplation, then we will get irritated. So this is the purpose that we have to turn, or we have to see all these um, analysis. And this is what Abhidhamma is about. Then classification of the mental states. So since beginning, I have mentioned Abhidhamma classify 52 mental states and we classify them into three main groups. The first one, ethically variable. Ethically variable in Pali we call Enya Samana. And some scholars, they translate that as common to others. So what is other? Down there, we have two more, unwholesome and beautiful. Basically, we have two. Unwholesome group is one, beautiful group is one. Beautiful means because they have good qualities, they are shining, they are brilliant, they are beautiful. That's the way. Good state and bad state. So the first group, ethically variable, they are common to both states, right? And when they are together with the unwholesome or the unethical states, they also have the quality of this uh, unethical quality. And when they are together with the beautiful state, they have the power or ability, the power or the ability they got from this, uh, they adopt this. So uh, like a person who go along with different kind of people, when he or she is with good people, then he or she will do such thing like um, learning Dhamma, joining retreat or like um, reciting of the Paretas and Patanas and doing good deeds for others. And when uh, with a group of people like who got gambling and sort of some addiction in the drug, that person will also have the same, um, will do the same. So it is the meaning. So here I have explanation. Um, ethically variables are states that are compatible. Compatible mean agreeable. They are okay with both unwholesome and beautiful states. So here, unwholesome mental states, aku sala jetasika, is amounting to 14, and beautiful mental states, sobana jetasika, amounting to 25. And then um, these days we have different uh, teachers, scholars uh, teaching Abhidhamma. For me, I'm just a student of the Abhidhamma, but uh, I'm happy to share. Uh, my understanding with you. And um, my one of my teacher, Oxford Seattle Venerable Professor, Dr. Kamai Damasami, he, he has also given a series of uh, six lectures in the theme of the introduction to Abhidhamma. And Seattle was telling that you have this 24 beautiful, 25 beautiful mental states to beat 14 unwholesome. So it's a good news that we have um, stronger group of beautiful states to wash away or to wipe out the unwholesome states. So further explanation here, they manage the mind. They here refer to the ethical, ethically variable states. They manage the mind making the ethical qualities to be wholesome and unwholesome. So it's already explained. Now we come to this. Um, it takes over one hour to reach here, but um, I think that I don't want to leave out uh, things so that uh, you got you lost connection. So you might feel that today I'm talking a lot and I'm given um, many explanation and lots of the data. So you might feel very congested in the brain. So just be relaxed. I'm also trying to relax myself. So unwholesome mental states, akusala jetasiga is 14. So these 14, here, we can subdivide according to this typology or the classification. 
we can classify subdivided into four groups. By nature, they form four groups. So the first three we can understand. We have seen them. Please see the first one, delusion moha. Just see the first words of each group, right? Delusion moha. And number two, greed loba. Three is the hatred or dosa. We have seen them as the root of the unwholesome akusala hatred in our last class, in our last lecture. So because they constitute three main roots and they have their followers, we have three groups. And simply the last one, the three of them, they just form the last group. The first one, delusion, moha, shamelessness, ahirika, okay, ahirika. Then we will have their opposite in the beautiful state. We have hiri, shame, moral shame. And another one, fearlessness. Uh, we will have further explanation later, right? I'm just introducing you with the words. Fearlessness, <coughs> sorry. Fearlessness um, to do evil. When there is this um, anuttapa in mind, we don't have any fear to do evil. We don't have any shame. Um, and we call in Pali, we call anuttapa. Okay, not anuttapa, anuttapa. And restlessness. Have you ever restless? Yes, very often we have this restlessness. And according to Abhidhamar, when we do something unwholesome, these four are always together. How strong they are under the guidance of this moha, under the leadership of this moha, uh, they, they have established their own nation or their own country, right? And the second group, uh, for the, uh, sorry, for the first group, Restlessness, the Pali word is odeja, okay, odeja. Delusion, moha. In case you are new to Abhidhamma, I'm trying to familiarize you with some Pali terms. Delusion, moha, shamelessness, ahiriga, fearlessness, anuttapa, restlessness, odeja. So this form the first group. They are common, they are always with every unwholesome state of mind, any unwholesome state of mind. And the second group, greed. Well, there is another powerful leader. The name is the greed or loba. And the greed is associates our wrong view, deity, and conceit, mana. Here you might notice that I have emphasized the word deity, right? Because it's really dangerous thing that would, um, change our future existences and even in this life as well. So Loba, it's okay, they have, they are only three, but they can form a group. They are also strong enough. And later we will see how strong the greed or the Loba can be so that it is um, um, managing us from different lives to lives. And the third group, hatred, dosa. Yes, very common. We often have it in different forms. And the associates or the disciple of this hatred, this is the envy, Asa. Yes, we tend to envy, avarice, macharia, macharia, or the jealousy, and worry, kokoja. What kind of worry we will see later. So then avarice or materia, jealousy, and the worry. So these four, they form the dosa group, okay? Then the last one, sloth and torpor. It simply means to the laziness or dullness or the inability to do things of the mind and doubt. Here, sceptical doubt. Later we have explanation, Viji Okay. 
slot is Tina, Topo is Meida, and Doubt is the VG Geja. Now let's see, because our main focus is about them. Delusion Moha. Here are some translation and the synonymous term. Delusion is the Moha and its synonymous term is the ignorance, Aweja. So sometimes it comes in the name of Moha, sometimes in the name of the Aweja, like a people who has two or three names. Some translation, uh, they use the word bewilderment. Then here, I try to include some example in the bracket or the parenthesis. Here it say, likened to blindfold. Uh, maybe in childhood, like um, uh, people of our age or elder, then they might have this kind of play that somebody cover your eye with a cloth, blind your eye, and you have to try to um, probe and try to touch and try to catch people. It means when it is covered, our eye is covered, then we are not able to see properly. We don't know what is true and what is not true. But this blindness is the mental blindness, not physical blindness. Physical blindness in the sense of covering the eye with a cloth, not such kind of covering. This is the mental blindness. Like, um, when we have the cataract, we have to remove from the eye so that we have clear vision. Then it's nature, mental blindness. Uh, another example uh, I have in the commentary that is like the, it's totally dark. How deep the darkness is, is like, likened by another example, just for your knowledge. It is the uh, new moon day. It means no moon at all, right? No moon day. And it is in a deep forest. And at the, around the midnight, around the midnight, a person on a dark moon day is traveling or just uh, resting in the middle of the forest without any light at all, without help of any lighting as, at all. So it would be very much blinded. Mental blindness and knowing concealment of true nature. We often attach to things and our body, but when we separate our body into 32 parts, then we would find it unpleasant and nothing to get attached to like, um, when we were young, when I have hair, then we have to, I have to go to the beauty saloon to have my hair cut. Then after cutting my hair, I feel light and fresh. But suppose my hair, my hair when it is on my head is, is, is a, like valuable. Sort of, it's a kind of beauty of a people hair. But when it gets into the dish or the teacup, then we have to remove it because we find it unpleasant. Sometimes the sweat that come from our body and the excrement from our body, like all these are unpleasant. But when there is moha, we take them to be pleasant because we are blindfolded by this moha. This is the meaning. As a result, when moha conceal or cover, concealment means covering, cover up the real nature, we are not able to penetrate. Penetrate is a deeper word. We say true nature, we penetrate. The noble truth or the satya or the disa, it can penetrate the true nature or the way the wisdom can penetrate, whereas the ignorance, which is the opposite of wisdom, okay, total opposite of wisdom. Wisdom is Vajja, here ignorance is the Avajja, non-penetration and absence of right understanding. So for Moha, I will come into a bit detail when we come to the law of dependent origination, Padeja Samobada. The second one, shamelessness. Oh, this is likened to a village pig. What does a village pig consume? 
maybe some food item and also excrement, right? The waste item. Absence of disgust at bodily and verbal misconduct. Then in the second line, it says not shrinking away from evil, lack of respect for oneself. When the there is no respect for ourselves. We don't have respect for ourselves. We tend to do evil. So long as we have respect in ourselves, we try to avoid from doing evil, either bodily or verbally. Right? So this is out of no respect or lack of respect for oneself. That's why there is um, absence of disgust at bodily and verbal misconduct. How do people write, you know, on the social media, such sort of the abusive word, words and hard speech? Because they don't have this um, moral shame, right? So Abhidhamma remind us that doing this is also akusala. They are together. And not shrinking away from evil. It means it doesn't avoid evil. It goes directly into the evil. What do I have to care? I'm just writing. I'm not, um, I'm not saying wrong. This is the truth. It's okay. I can just talk it. I can just write it. It doesn't mean anything to me. This is so common. It becomes so habitual today, these days. So this is lack of moral shame, shamelessness, right? So it's very important we refer to the moral shame. Like some people, they feel shame, they feel shy or they have shame um, in the public. When I was young, you might not believe that I'm very afraid of people. Like um, I follow my aunt and when people ask my name, I, I won't look at their face, you know. I just hide my face and I won't tell my name. So I, I used to be very... I used to be very shameful, or I used to be shy, yes. Um, not such kind of shame, right? But this shame is the absence of disgust to do evil. And the same is applied to the fearlessness, that is the lack of respect for others. We are, it says that modern science says that, um, psychology say that, Human beings are social animals. Do you agree? We are social animals generally. It means we live in the society. It, it does not mean that you are compared as an animal, but it means that you cannot live alone. You have to live in the society. That's why you are social animal. The conclusion goes this way. So there should be respect for others, respect for the family, for the teacher, for, for your uh, nationality, for your country, right? These are the respect for others. People around us accept us, the people around us that is represented by others here. Absence of dread, not fearful, no fear at all to do, to commit evil, to speak abusive words, and also is uh, very dangerous to divide people. In Bali, we call pisu na waja, pisu na waja, dividing people, right? When two people are united, they are liking to each other, they are um, caring for each other, a person out of the ill will or the evil, the uh, motivation, would divide people, getting bad about each other on the other side. Like this, for example. Here, we have this example, firefly. This kind of the um, insects, they come directly into the flame and they get themselves burnt because they think this is something shiny. Right? They think something shiny. This is something pleasant, something shiny because they saw the flame and they think that um, this is something pleasant, shining, and to get the approach to that, they get into the fire flame and they got themselves burnt. So it is like that. And another one, restlessness. 
It's very easy, no need to explain much. Uh, we don't have steady mind. We don't have, we lose when there is restlessness in mind. Our mind is not steady. Our mind is not tranquil. It's not quiet anymore or it's noisy, running, moving around here and there. See, uh, a person with the uh, mental disorder or the when um, going around here and there, like when people are outburst with anger, they will shout and they will just move around anywhere when it is out of control, sort of like restlessness. Liken to the water wave, sorry, water wave. The water in the lake is stable. The water in the pond, or let's say the water in the cup is stable. And you throw a stone, it got shaked. It got shaken. It's not stable anymore. In the same way, when there is restlessness in our mind, our mind is not stable anymore. Our mind is not steady anymore. There is no peace at all. So these four um, qualities, whenever there is unwholesome, they are with us. What is unwholesome? Going back to this, please refer again to the first three group. Now we talk about delusion. It may, for, with the second group also, they are agreeable. When there is greed, these four are moving from behind. They are working from behind, like they are fueling the fire. They are fanning the fire. And again, when there is anger or envy or jealousy with us, they are also happy with them. So they go along with both greed group and hatred group. That is the meaning. Okay, let me go back to this. Now we have finished with these four. Delusion, moha. Moral shamelessness, ahirika, moral fearlessness, anodaba, and the this mental restlessness, that is the odeja. These four, because they are agreeable to um, all type of unwholesome, either with loba, greed, or dosa, hatred, or the group, they are known as universal. You might notice on top. Now I explain this term, unwholesome universal mental states. In Pali is just to listen, sabha kusala sadharana. Yeah, not sabha kusala. Pali is very important and let's say we have to be very careful. Just one bar or in Nyama we call just ye cha. It would totally change the meaning. It would totally give you an opposite meaning or interpretation. Sabha kusala means sabha and akusala. If you just write sabha kusala means all good. Sabha kusala means all bad, all evil. So it is agreeable to all evil minds. They are uh, working from the behind, right? Like the gangster. A gangster, they have many um, followers who go out and do robbing or killing or sort of thing, and they're just staying home. They are like the gangster. Uh, they are instructing Loba, do this. Okay, and Dosa, you manage that, they are like that. Let's move on to another group, Loba group. In the Loba group, we have three, that is craving or attachment, Loba, wrong view, deity, and mana. So I will explain one by one. Are you bored? Now we have finished one hour and 30 minutes, but I think uh, uh, we will continue so that uh, we, we can finish up with this. Loba. Loba comes in different levels and degrees. The first one, craving, tanha, tanha. And last, or passion, raga. Raga is like also the color that color the mind and the clinging, when the craving become uh, very intense or very strong, we call them clinging upadana. In Yama, we call upadana, right? Sometimes because of our own view that we, we got trouble. In Yama, we call upadana, upayaude. So clinging, that is the upadana. 
So different levels and degree we can see here, selfish desire, longing, attachment, and what happened when there is craving or lava? It grabs an object, not giving up. Yes, this is mine, uh, my family, like my friends, like um, my car, and like my, 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 my degree, and all sort of thing, like they will last forever. So with such kind of thought, then we try to grab an object, not giving up. Okay, this is another one. Please remember this, not giving up, not letting go, okay? Then Loba doesn't let go. Loba, come, come, I will grab it, I will keep it. And here we have good example. Lichen to monkey lime, to catch monkeys. So this is example from the commentary. In olden days, it says that the hunters, they go to the forest to catch monkey. Maybe they might kill and eat it or they might sell it out. And what the substance that they use, you know, it is a sticky substance and it looks bright and shiny. It means sort of attractive thing. Then this is the trap for the monkeys. You know the nature of monkey, they are very inquisitive. Mm. Then when they saw, let's say a group of monkey comes and the hunter has already put the lime and watching them from somewhere. Then monkeys are very inquisitive things, nosy things. Some nosy monk, they try to observe what is that shiny thing I have never seen before. So interesting. Then go and catch that with one hand, one paw. So it got stuck at the tree. Oh, then had made another attempt. Suppose the left paw or the left hand got stuck. Then try to remove the left hand by pushing with the right hand. So now the monkey got stuck in two places. Still, uh, the monkey, he or she would make further attempt, use another leg and got in three places, right? And still the fourth one, the remaining leg. Now the monkey got stuck in the tree in four places. You know, imagine poor monkey. Because I'm not in the monkey in the position that we would say that I'm, I can say I'm poor monkey. It got trapped in four places. Still, it doesn't give up. Oh, I will try for the last attempt. So with his nose or muzzle, he tried to push. It means try to uh, remove his body, detach or away from the sticky substance. Now the poor thing got stuck in all the five places. So this is the story of monkey. Now as a human being, I can talk about the story of monkey, you know, but we human being, we also got attached to the five senses, pleasant object, attracting sounds, music, movies, right? And the smell, good smell. We have different kinds of perfumes and all the uh, toiletry items, right? And the taste, of course, I also like fruit, but from time to time, we have to be careful not to get attached to that. And the, um, the use, uses that about the clothes and the beddings and the uh, furniture and all sort of thing. These days, there are, due to advanced technology, there are many inventions and innovations and people are hankering after these five senses, enjoyment and five sensual pleasure. So the noble person, Ariya, or the Arahant, they would look at us like monkey. Oh, poor thing, they are getting attached to all these five senses, right? So this is how we can contemplate. Then here, going back to some uh, key points that I have shared here, strongest attachment, among the attachment, it says that strongest, strongest attachment is the craving for the existences. Later, I will talk about this tree, craving for existences. Because I want 
to be born as a human being, for example, I do some good deeds. As a, hum as a result, I'm now born as a human being. And fortunately, we are fortunate enough to learn Buddha Dhamma, study and practice to the extent as we can, how fortunate we are, right? But still, if you really don't eradicate all the mental defilements, or maybe I still want to learn Abhidhamma as a deity, then going, um, uh, we can still uh, do some good deeds, or I still want to be reborn as a human being because I want to do for the welfare of the human or the society, you know? This is good intention, but um, when we think for the enjoyment of the sensual pleasures that we have in those existences, then we crave for the life, future life existences. It say it is the strongest. Then how do we attach to our thing? Thinking object or person as mine, eat and mama, this is mine. Okay, this is mine, you don't touch it, you don't take it, right? Be careful, you, you don't deal with my friend uh, because, um, or my, my, uh, because he or she already belonged to me and like this. And depending on feeling, craving arises. In the Padeja Samobhada, the law of dependent origination, we have this link, Vedana Pejyatana. Because there is liking, Tasa Bejaya Vedana, it begins first. When there is contact, there is liking, right? You try a new food. Yes, I like it. Oh, I, I like it very much. Next time I will order it and I will try to have it, right? Then Vedana Bejaya Dana. Rector Seattle has explained well, we cannot avoid. Once there is contact, there must be feeling. We cannot avoid feeling, but we must exit at the feeling so that it don't go to the craving dana, right? So cessation of crazy craving is the exit from the round of rebirth. So this here, um, I have quoted from the Dhammajaka Bhavadana Soda, the first sermon. We Myanmar people, more of the Myanmar people, and there might, might be some other Buddhists from different location of the world who recite this Dhammajagapavadana Soda. For some, they have uh, learned it since their childhood and they have been reciting that for life. Yes, very beneficial. And it's also good or it's also more important to contemplate on it. There is the phrase that craving is the origin of suffering, samudaya satya, samudaya tissa, okay? Craving or this dana or loba is the cause of the this samudaya satya or tamudaya dissa. Why? Craving or hunger gives rise to fresh rebirth, new rebirth again and again. Here you might know this word, yayan dana bono bavika. And bound up with pleasure and attachment, nandi raga sahagada. Here you see the word raga. Nandi. Seek the light or find gratification. Now here and now there, right? Tadra, tadra, be nandini. This life, there is craving. Another life, there is also craving. And here we can have three kinds of craving. Kamatana, craving for sensual pleasures. Pavadana, craving for life or existences. Of course, the blissful abode. And it says that Many teachings in uh, many discourses in the Buddha teachings say that beings, not even human being, any living being, they have craving or attachment to their life. It's very prominent. This is Bawadana, Vibhavadana, craving for non existence, a sort of attachment to not getting rebirth, craving for the non existence, right? Then, to understand this law about better, we have this wrong view or deity. So deity, here there are some explanation. Deity, the word deity itself, there are two meanings, number one and two. The first one, deity say view or seeing, but Rector Seattle also used the word philosophy. Deity alone can be view itself. No right view, no wrong view, right? 
just seeing or philosophy. And another one, another meaning of deity is wrong view or seeing wrongly. So we have to understand deity according to the context because it come in the unwholesome or akusala jedesika. This refers to the wrong view deity. Actually, the Pali word complete name is the mecha deity, mesa deity, right? But here just deity alone is used. It is the wrong interpretation or belief. There is my permanent self, me atta. This is myself, right? Uh, my soul and personality belief. This is a very common one and Mughal method, it, it explained to eradicate this personality belief. And eradicated by the first noble path, Sota Pati Mega. So it can be eradicated. Eradicate means uprooted, total eradication or total destruction. And here we have some kind of deity. So Brahma Jala Soda explained about the 62 kinds of wrong view. Here I have some two eternalism, Sasada deity. Our world is eternal, self is eternal, life is eternal. Or um, once those who hold such kind of eternality view, they think that our life or soul at the death of our body move to another life. It, they call transmigrate. Uh, nowadays, people migrate to another country. They call migrant like that. You know, the self or soul, when at during after that death, it goes out from this body to another body and transmigrate. That's why there is the wrong belief that uh, a person stays for seven days after death. It is not so. Immediately after the death consciousness or the completion of this life, it goes to another life. And annihilationism, ocheda deity, there is no more life. So this is the last, the, the last life, then you can do everything, you can enjoy anything. There won't be any more life, such kind of wrong view. So opposite is the samadhi or right view. And mana conceit. Uh, this is um, not much difficult to explain, I think. It is the haughtiness or uh, thinking highly of oneself, self excitation. This I am always like putting the term, right? Uh, I, can, I can do it. But this I can do it has different sort of explanation. Sometimes we have to encourage ourselves or encourage our, our friends or family, okay, you can do it. It is sort of motivation or inspiration. But sometimes people think too highly of themselves and they might say that I can do it, only I can do it, nobody else can do it. When they want to have this um, over thinking, oh, uh, how do we say that? Overthinking of one's own ability. This is the meaning, right? Mana. So three type of mana. Hina mana, inferior conceit. A person is, um, let's say, uh, let's judge people or with the um, uh, ability or the learning or the um, status. Um, inferior conceit. A person is lower than somebody else, but still there is pride, right? And sadisa mana, equal conceit. A person who is inferior to, uh, to you might think, why do I have to care of you? I also have like uh, my own ability and this and that. And when we come to the equal conceit, it is false, right? We are in the same level. Why do I have to care you? I also got this job. I also got this degree. Why do I have to care you? And superior conceit. Of course, you are better than others. So I should have this conceit. Then here we have actually this mana is akusala unwholesome, right? But here we have another explanation that worth possessing the mana that we should have it, let's say. And another one, the mana, we should not have this. Sevitaba mana, asevitaba mana. And the bodhisattva, 
uh, aspiration to become the Buddha, uh, many people like uh, consider this is out of compassion. And Rector Siado shared his opinion and is also very interesting. Siado said that he has the mana. Mana means such kind of this sevita or the mana that what having or possessing. In his own mind, he might think like that. A person with such kind of ability and who has fulfilled perfection for such life existences. If I do not save human beings, I do not save beings, who will save? So I'm responsible, then I will do that. So it, Seattle has pointed out like that. So that is the Sevita Bhatmana, right? But we have to be careful about this, the three kind of mana, inferior, equal, and superior kind of mana. And now we move on to dosa, uh, because I think I would like to cover up these things. Dosa. Dosa may not much explanation is needed. Different levels and degrees, anger, hatred, aversion, too much strong dislike, ill will, out of ill will that um, do this slandering, dividing people, telling lie, killing, stealing, not because uh, a person want to have possession, but out of ill will did it. And irritation, you feel so irritated in the mind. Uh, re hearing again and again, somebody has telling you this, somebody has done on this, right? Annoyance, animosity, worry, anxiety is here. Sad, sadness, sorry, it should be sadness. Depression, stress, all these come under this dosa. Then this, this depression, is in the uh, depressed form of dosa. Like sometimes we are so, we feel sorry, we cry, we lament over things. This is, let's say, depressed form of dosa. And sometimes it is inflated, it outbursts like ferocity. It will uh, harm yourself or you harm others or throw items and harm others, right? And to spread or burn up mind and body is function. When there is dosa, in our mind, it burned up our mind and body, like my face would change, my voice would change, and the, my body would be shaking, then become unstable, right? And the, they are ground for annoyances, it means like in the commentary, it explained that um, that person has done something good to someone whom you dislike, or do some harm to someone you like. So there may be some reason as such. And another one, Dosa is the leader. So its follower being Asa, jealousy. Uh, for Dosa, we can have this um, ex, uh, simile, likened to the forest fire. The fire start from the forest and the whole forest itself got burnt. Or like the stricken snake. The snake, when it is stricken, then it will harm you back. Asa, another one, jealousy, is also likened to a flame. Here, we have to take notice between these two. Asa, another one, jealousy and avarice. So, jealous of others' success. When other person, let's say my friend or my sister is doing better than me, I have, I'm being jealous. It means another person is in a better position than you. Dissatisfied with others' success. I feel dissatisfied when other people praise her. Oh, this much I can do. Why, why she got so much praise and so much admiration and like that. Then aversion towards, towards that. So the opposite is the mudita, appreciative join. And suppose, oh, sorry, instead of having jealousy, if we appreciate or if we rejoice in her success, in her effort, then both of us will have to be happy. So please bear in mind this jealousy, it is out of jealous of others' success. But another one, materia, stinginess or avarice. Then the, the translation may or may not give the, the exact meaning, but it will become clearer as we move on. Then materia, concealing your own success. not to bear sharing with others. 
maybe don't understand yet, let's move on. Shrinking away from sharing, don't want to share. Why? You have a good dwelling place, then you don't want to share with others. And even the simple example, like when we travel or when we go to the public place, maybe I'm occupying the whole bench. I put all my item and stuff so that other people cannot sit. They, they also don't have seat, right? So this, I have this majoria, our sat majoria, and family and friends. Like you don't want to share your, fam your friend with others or even in the family, you know, there's even among sibling, they think that the father loved his daughter, the mother loved that son and so on, you know. And for our monastic people, uh, we also have to be careful that we shouldn't attach to our devotees or only this devotee must donate only to my place, not like that, right? Families and gain every material gain that we have it and reputation. Only I want to be famous, not others and knowledge, Dhamma sharing. I don't want to share Dhamma with others because uh, I worry that that person will do better than me. So from this, the meaning should be clear, but to make it better, let's quote the, the sentence in the middle. Let this wonder be not to others. Echariyam mahotu. This is the actual explanation of Macharya. Echariyam means something wonder. Mahotu may not be others. Let this wonder may not be others only to me. Like my beauty or the place, the family, the gain, reputation, knowledge, it would be only me I can share with others. Because I cannot stand sharing with others, it has to be in the dosa group, not in the loba group. That is the meaning. Then the next one, dosa group, kokoja, that is the remorse or regret or liken to undutiful assistance, or even maybe like I don't um, prepare well, I don't prepare my study well, my lesson well, later I will have to regret sort of thing. Regretting over evil that has been done. Regretting over some evil that has already been done. Regretting over failing to do good. That person asks for help, I should have help. I didn't do that, then later feel repent. But maybe if you are in a position not being able to help, then it's okay. Then you are also in a position to be able to help and that person really needs it and we didn't do that. Then later we might get repent. And Rector Seattle has added one point, regretting over works that is not successful. So I have added up. So this doesn't need explanation, I think. And this, in Dorsa group, we have four, right? Let me go back. In Dorsa group, we have this Dorsa, Asa, jealousy, right? Uh, sorry, uh, Macharia, stinginess or avarice. And we have this Gokoja. So the three followers, jealousy, stinginess and remorse. Here stinginess refer to the Macharia, avarice or uh, so. They are mutually exclusive. These three cannot arise together. It means they cannot happen at the same time, maybe one after another or so, because they take different objects, right? So we come to the last group, Tina Meda, which is very common to us. Tina, sloth. We don't know what is sloth, but here it's explained as sluggishness or dullness of mind. Uh, we feel so heavy, we feel so dull, right? What happened? We don't have any driving power. It's a lack of driving power to dispel energy. When there is no driving power, no more energy. It means when there is dullness in our mind and the mental state, we don't feel like doing any good. Like um, just as I have mentioned, for example, joining chanting, do, joining chanting, morning chanting, doing meditation, like. Um, uh, reciting Pareta, listening to Dhamma talk and all sort of doing good things like helping others. We, we don't feel like doing that. So it's likened to the withered sunflower. When there is the heat, 
the sunflower got withered is like that. Meda, torpor. It's the lethargic state of the mental states. Actually, Tina and Meda, they are a combination. They come in a pair. Dullness, Tina is the dullness of consciousness and Meda is the dullness of mental states. That's all the same. And use some different wording, but it's the same. Lethargic state of mental state. And here you can see sickness. Abhidhamma say that when this, there is Tina and Meda, sloth and torpor, we are sick, we are not healthy. Only when we are healthy, we can do our job then, right? So when we are mentally sick, we don't feel like doing any good. That is the meaning. So uh, when there is Meda, okay, I, I'm getting like this dropping and nodding and sleepiness. Then these two, sloth and torpor, they arise together as they are opposed to energy. We have to put effort to drive these two away. And they constitute one of the five hindrances, Nivarana, which is overcome by the in initial application. So for, for those uh, who don't study yet, Abhidhamma yet, it will get clearer later. Mental hindrances. They also happen to be in Akusala. Why do dullness, sleepiness, and laziness to be Akusala, right? because it will um, motivate or give any energy to do good. Then we tend to be away from kusala, that is the meaning. So we chikeja, last but not least, very dangerous, subtle doubt. Then we chikeja. Chikeja means cure. Vichikeja, difficult to get cured. When there is Vichikeja, doubt, sceptical doubt, spiritual doubt in mind, it's very difficult to get cured. A person, a patient who can't get cured, what happened, will die. In the same way, if we don't cure our Vichikeja, we will go to a paya or the hell. So when there is Vichikeja in mind, it is inability to have confidence, no confidence, or no sada, or no belief in the triple gem, Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. Threefold training refers to the sila, samadhi, penya, okay, morality, concentration, and wisdom. And Vichikeja also doesn't believe in past and future life. It means it denies the law of karma and also the Four Noble Truths. So it's also one of the mental hindrances. And at the beginning, you might notice I have highlighted deity, wrong view, and vijikeja, this word, because these two can send us to abaya. They are strong, stronger, let's say, unwholesome states. Right? Latina and Meda, just uh, it won't, it lacks energy for you to give motivation to do good, but it doesn't send you to abaya directly but it lacks mental energy. But this deity wrong view and vijikeja, this spiritual doubt or sceptical doubt, very harmful. So this is to be eradicated by Sota Badimega. So for us waddling people, it is sort of dangerous things, right? Then I have, uh, I will conclude in two, three minutes, it's already 11. May, may factor generating rebirth. Why are we born again and again? So these are the culprits enveloped by latent ignorance. Latent means that lies under the surface. Ignorance, um, this is to be eradicated only by the um, Arahata Mega. So it lies latent in us. And rooted in latent craving because of this craving that now generated by volitional formation, then we are born again and again. So this is the explanation from the, uh, this uh, chapter eight, uh, the condition, sort of explaining about why we have recurrent rebirth. So aweja moha tanha, right? And when they flame up, then we do something evil, then we are born again and again. So these latent disposition and hindrances are some explanation for you. So you can just read and refer to by yourself. So these are the appendix information for you. Then how do we drive this away? 
Yes, I think this is the last slide. So you will be escaped soon. Then to drive the unwholesome states away, we should have determination, miyamita, and inclination. Our mind should be inclined to develop good, to do good, right? And practice. Yes, everything needs practice. In reciting the Mottasa, we, we normally don't do mistake because we are very much well practiced in that and attention. We should have the right attention. So this is from the Dhamma Singhani and I quote, and I hope that um, we have come to the end of this class. And today I try to give you the mind and its components and how they function. Later I go to the um, 52 mental states, their classification and uh, finally, I focus on the unwholesome mental states, Akusala Jetasika, because instead of doing something good, it is more important to avoid evil, right? Um, we have this poison, there are two cups. One cup is poison, another one is your nutrition, which is more important to know, the poison, right? Even if you don't take nutrition, it's still all right. But if you happen to take this poison, then we will have sort of harm. So these poisons, poisonous states in our mind, we need to know so that we can help them. Even if we not totally remove or eradicate them, we can make them weaken by the power of this um, wholesome state, kusala. And there are some conditions that I have given that our mind should be inclined, we should have determination and we should make a practice. So I do hope that um, we, we were spending these two hours and I really appreciate and thank you very, very much for being with me for these two hours. Okay, have a great morning, have a great evening and have a good night, thank you. So we will recite Bodha Sasanam Jiram Data to three times. Buddha Sasanam Jiram Data to Buddha Sasanam Jiram Data to Buddha Sasanam Jiram Data to Sadu 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 Bawa to Sabat Mangalam Rekan to Sabat Devada Sabba Bodha Nubawe Na Sabba Dhamma Nubawe Na Sabba Sangha Nubawe Na Sada Suti Bhavan Jute. May there be all blessings. May the deities protect you. By the power of the Buddha, by the power of the Dhamma, by the power of the Sangha, may you all be well, happy, peaceful, and accomplished. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sayali, and thank you everybody who attend this class. And we will see you uh, on next uh, week, uh, uh, same time again. And uh, any question, you can send me email. Uh, my email is at dhammadownload.ma at gmail.com. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, okay, thank you.